our first speaker will be Dr. Cynthia Boy from Geomatic Engineering Department, UMAT. And she is going to talk about the role of women in mining and petroleum industry. Thank you very much. I am happy to be here. And I'm happy you are also here. I am supposed to talk on the role of women in the mining and petroleum industry, successes and challenges. I was introduced as a geomatic person, so I would introduce the subject in a geomatic way, so please bear with me. <laughs> land. I want to start with land because of the basic elements that we have in the world. Talk about air, water, land, and so on. Those of you who were watching Captain Planet those times, <laughs> you know, land is always mentioned first. And one may ask why. This is because land is somehow superior to the others. Um, I stand for correction. Land or the earth is one of the most important natural elements that we have. And land refers to the solid surface of the earth and the part that is permanently covered, not permanently covered by water. In fact, it even includes the continental shelf. And land, as we know, is a free gift. Why am I talking about land? in mineral mining and um, petroleum industry. I'm sure all your concessions are on land. When Prof was showing his slides, he showed a slide that someone, you know, some um, Galamsey operators or small scale miners were mining on the water surface and he was saying that nobody has a concession on the water. So you see that Land plays an important role in all that we do. It is a free gift from God, and it is a source of our wealth. Gold, bauxite, diamond, oil, gas, wherever, at whatever depth it is extracted from, it is on land. And all our concessions are on land. I said most, but all of them are on land. Our rich mineral resources come from, this time I qualify the earth or the land as mother land or mother earth. Why is the earth referred to as a mother? I don't know whether it has ever occurred to us. Why do we say mother earth? Mothers are treated with love, dignity, affection, and respect. In our pursuit for precious metals and the black gold, as we normally call it, we have to treat earth, mother earth, the land, and the environment such that posterity. And our chairperson spoke about the youth. In fact, land is supposed to be used by our generation and to be handed over to the next generation. So treat, in your operations, treat land as if you are handing it over to the next generation of young um, professionals. So there is very, it is very important for us to treat our land very well. Now sustainability should be the hallmark of our mining operations. I'm now going on to the main agenda. Whether registered large scale uh, small scale mining, we should be mindful of the environment. Nobody might see you, but remember you are dealing with something that is so precious. How many were born with lands? Ah, and now you may have land, but when you die, you will hand it over to another person. So let us treat the land as if our lives, in fact, our lives depend on it. In our quest for professional development and sharing, knowledge sharing, um, the contribution of women 
cannot be overemphasized. In fact, as you see from the statistics, women constitute 52% um, of the world's population. And you can see that the involvement of women at all levels is essential to improve the quality of lives as well as um, that of their families and their dependents. Prof was saying that the small scale mining industry is feeding a million, but then it's providing jobs for a million, but we have 6, 000, 6 million people benefiting from it. When you employ a woman, it helps so as to bring about this uh, desired <coughs> interest. Now, we know that women are, most of the times, their involvement in politics and even in governance is so small. In fact, in Ghana, we have out of the 279, 275 um, parliamentarians, only 22, 29 are females, which constitutes 10 percent. Currently, 11 percent of senior leadership positions in the oil and gas industry are filled by women, only 11 percent. And the statistics continue in the United States, just 5 percent of the fortune. 500 CEOs are females, and 17% and of the corporate board seats and 25% of the management seats are held by females. You see that female representation is small. Now, according to the Chamber of Mines, 6.9% of the industry and um, constitute or female um, Workforce constitutes 6.9 percent of the industry, which is very small. And those that are represented also have, in fact, our our representation is insignificant compared to that of the male counterparts. Why is the extractive industry not attractive to female workforce? Are the female population lazy? The answer is no. And why? We have wrong perceptions which have influenced females from um, getting employed or by training them, getting themselves employed by the mining companies. We have women perceived to be the cause of man's downfall from the biblical stories we heard. Some say that women are meant for the kitchen and they are supposed to be caregivers. And those kind of jobs don't pay at all. You can spend 24 hours and what you get uh, is woefully inadequate. They are homemakers and not secular workers. Some even think females are bad luck in, mining, in the mining industry. We read about Viola Macmillan, and she took, she decided to, to actually venture into mining, even though it was not, she was not supposed to do that per the, uh, the beliefs. And when she ventured into it, she was able to make a lot. So it means that there are, we have a lot of potential hidden in women, but if you don't come out, or if the opportunity is not given to the woman to bring out what she has, what she can also contribute, it will forever be buried. Yes, talking about the tradition that in South Africa, underground is not for women. So when you are thinking about mining, as far as underground is concerned, forget about it. Current mining practices indicate the move towards mechanization. Which, pre which presents an opportunity for women in the industry. I remember when we were in first year, we had one lady, we were two females who were reading geomatic engineering, and one lady was reading electrical engineering. The first question that was asked was that, can you carry an electric pole? <laughs> 
if you want to be an electrical engineer, can you carry an electric? That is a perception. But when we got trained, we realized that you don't need to carry anything. So it is very important for us to um, make progress, irrespective of what people perceive. In addition, the current trends in mining, the exploration, product handling, and mineral beneficiation, you realize that some of these have been um, mechanized. And even some, like mineral beneficiation, it is done in a, in a congenial environment where a female can convene, even if you are pregnant, you can work. I want to give some examples. For instance, in the field of geomatic, as far as mining is concerned, we have we have modern equipment like the total stations, which we all know about, GNS is a global navigation satellite system receivers or GPS receivers. We have the drone or manned aerial vehicles, which can be used for spatial data collection. Instead of going to the field to collect the data using the old techniques, which might take more time, you can use these and you have speed and accuracy, speed and accuracy at your as advantage. So these can be used to even GPS, GNSS integration can be used for monitoring, even fleets, and also it can be incorporated in GIS, which is an area of interest. And the implementation of safety measures in the operation of mining industry creates a congenial environment for the female workforce. And therefore, females should dare take up the challenge in mining and petroleum. This is a, an example. We have the drone, and then data has been captured. We have the first one being the base. The surface has been created, and then a grid is superimposed on the pickups that have been done. And then you can see that the volume has been generated. And all this will not take much time. A female can do it. And therefore, we should not say that um, mining is a reserve, a reserve for females and um, for males. We have some successes in um, successes of women in mining and petroleum industry, which is not so much. We have a number of people who have excelled, and some are still excelling. Some we do not know about you. But a lot of people are making strides in this field. But let's go to the challenges or the obstacles. No matter the successes we have chalked, the percentage is so small. Okay, so some of these are female CEOs and ministers, and then some leaders, female leaders. Now we look at the obstacles to women progression. Now, the first thing we think about is educational disparity. Most of our females are interested in taking the humanities. Females like reading a lot. And you, if you go to a girls' school, you only find a few, a handful of females taking the court sciences, thinking that science is difficult. I don't like mathematics. But with a little effort, you can make it. Then we have cultural norms. We also have women consistently taking on the double burden of balanced work and domestic responsibilities. I must confess that it is a challenge which you must confront once you, are, you have decided to be a female who will work in a male-dominated uh, environment. You have to and confront, you have, you'll be confronted with this and you have to overcome it. Then, lack of professional role models for young women might be a factor that discourages some women from participating in technical fields. Technical fields. We have some females who are into managerial and human resource and all that, but they, they came through the line of reading the humanities. But we want to encourage mathematics. 
mathematics. Sometimes the methods that are used in uh, disseminating information or sometimes in teaching mathematics makes some people dislike the course. But mathematics is very simple and straightforward. Unlike English, mathematics 1 plus 2 is 3 under all conditions. But with English, sometimes under this condition you have to use this. Under that condition, we have to our female folks to take up these courses. A university degree is, a, is on high demand, and you have read courses related to um, the field of mining, geology, geoscience, surveying, engineering, chemical, social science, and all that. You are likely to get employment. And also in the area of business. Mining is, I'm sure, and it opens doors for businesses. We have management, we have accounting, project management, human resource, and all that. Then information technology. These are some of the areas that when you specialize in or you study in, you are likely to also get um, employed either by a large scale mining or a small scale mining or you yourself can be innovative. Join forces with other uh, like minds and then you can start something. We have trade base, we have technicians, electricians, carpenters, welders and so on are all in demand. So if we can encourage our younger female folks to trade directions. It will be very helpful. We also have the hard hat um, mining. Those who are into truck and the truck drivers and all that. Females can because some of these machines are not so like they used to be previously. Some of them are power steering and you wouldn't need so much energy to be able to do. There are other qualified um, qualifications that can also get or land you into a very good business or into. Now the way forward, confront your potential challenge. There is something within man that when you activate, it brings a good out of you. And you have to really challenge yourself to do it. Once you say, I will do it, you have the whole force of heaven supporting you and you will be able to make it. So we should confront our potential challenges and be disciplined and focused. When you throw two things, you can only catch one. So remain focused. Whatever thing you want to do, pursue it with all your strength. And you will be successful. Expand your horizon by acquiring more knowledge through experience as we are having and uh, as you are having uh, capacity building it can also be on the job it can be a short course you take it can be anything that will better you or place you in a better position to be able to perform then we have to come with other people other developers and then separate yourself from the crowd create an individual identity and learn to support yourself and your dependents. I believe if females will take up some of these, I'm sure most of the people here, uh, if this is not for you, but then you can pass it on to your children so that they take up math, science, uh, engineering, technology, and that will take them very far. You can see some efforts are being made. The, petroleum, the World um, Petroleum Council they are trying to, not only them, we also have a, an, an association, professional women, ladies in mining and allied professions. We also go from secondary school to secondary school to carry the young girls. Those who are in sec form two, form three, we encourage them to take up some of these courses because we believe that if females are empowered, there will be a better place to live in. By way of concluding, um, Susan 
Brother, according to her, she says that women have a different and unique way of solving problems that encompass a practical approach and considerations of all parties involved. And I believe that we need women, the participation of women in the industry of mining and petroleum in order to bring us to our desired end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bo um, for instance, when I came to first year in Yuma, there is this saying that very pretty ladies, in quotes, Those can't do engineering. <laughs> that was a headache because like you're supposed to do the office work, not the engineering thing. I went ahead to do the engineering thing. One of the intentions, I had my internship in um, Golden Star Wasa. I made an operator teaching how to use the back hole. And these are qualities, like some things I wanted to add to myself since I'm a human product. Now, I'm coming to do my service in Delman Golf Hose. And they are saying again that very pretty ladies can't work in their mind. How can we overcome such a hurdle? Because I know I'm not, gen I'm not the only victim. Yeah. There are a lot of us out there. We are going to do our service. Employment to be another thing. My name is Benedict oh, from the University of Ghana. When you were presenting, you kept on hammering on the point that we are supposed to encourage each other. But here lies the case where a woman wouldn't want another woman to be her boss. Because women are said to be their own enemies. So in such a situation, how are you going to encourage another woman to take up a position and be your boss? Thank you, sir. My name is AJ Paul. I'm from Kane West. My question is, how do we encourage people from the rural areas, especially the ladies? Maybe the mother has not been in school, but the person wants to do a math or engineering course, but there's nothing like orientation for that person. Because a friend is doing the course, so she too wanted to join a friend to do the same course. But at the end, you find, the person will find herself in a different direction. So I think that uh, they need some kind of orientation, especially the ladies. Thank you. It still comes to the issue of balancing things at home and on the job side. Uh, I, I had an experience. One of the girls, I was a manager at Anglo Dashan Technical Section. And as a manager, a lady came, employed her. First year, second year, she got pregnant, we got married. And because she was very close to me, I, I sort of became a father. And my mother, my wife, had to take up the daughter after the three months when she came back. And it's like I had to plan for it. It was during the close to the redundancy period, so I was a bit free. All my meetings were planned so that I could include her, drive her almost five uh, kilometers back to the home to take the, a baby from my wife, breastfeed her, and send her back. I think very, very few uh, girls will get that opportunity. I think that's how do we balance it. The second thing is that uh, a cousin of mine, a medical doctor, married to another doctor lady. And within the last three months, we met. And the situation at home meant that the girl wants to drop out of the hospital because she can't get time for her, her, her children. She's got three now. And I told her how much her parents have also invested for the past seven or what years, and we want to drop out. It can't be. So these are challenges that needs to be faced. The first question, Boham, she wants to, you have already gone through the training. You can now use, um, is it a backhoe? So now if you get yourself in the in a mining company, you are as a plus person, you are not going to be given an equipment to operate. But if you so wish, you could. And if the laws allow you, as I'm standing here, I can use the roller. I, will, I found myself working in the construction industry and I decided to learn how to, even though I was a survey, when I'm free, I use the, the roller for rolling, for the compaction of you know, the payment. So these are things that could be done, but that is not your field. So try and stay within your field and know that you are capable. That is why you have completed. Then again, the question regarding the having babies. In fact, we have children, you have to plan. As, as a working mother, you have to plan so that 
you know when you are going to have your children. It, I can use myself as an, an example. I used four years to have three of my children, three children, and that was it. <laughs> and afterwards, you have to help yourself. Because as a lecturer, if you are not able to make time to prepare, you go to the classroom and it will be... <laughs> so you have to really make up your mind that this is what you want to do. But if you have a young child and for some reason you can't, you will have to excuse yourself from work. It is also possible. If you can speak to your employers for say six months or one year, you want to devote time, it is also possible. Okay, but you can get an assistant to help you. In my case, I have someone who assists. Then I go breastfeed, come back, and the person is there. And I share my salary with the person. I pay the person. But you cannot eat your cake and have it. You need children. And you also need to progress in your career. So you have to balance things very well. Now, one of the questions women being their own enemies. That one, um, in fact, good women are always mentors and they help other, pe other younger women. As I was sitting down listening to um, our last but one speaker, I was so excited. And if you are a good person, you will also mentor other people. Okay, so let us take that thing from our minds that women are our own enemies. I am not an enemy to any woman. And you should, all females should not be enemies to. But we, 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 we help each other. So let us take that thing out of our minds and let us be positive. We can succeed. Let's encourage our younger ones. They have some within them that needs to be encouraged, needs to be inculcated until they are matured enough to benefit society. Thank you. Not to harass women, either orally or physically. Yeah. And we insist on that. If you do that, there's only one door in the company you walk out. <laughs> sure.